discuss all of this, uh, we want to talk to Florida Senator Rick Scott. Senator, thank you so much for taking the time. We have just outlined some of the most glaring uh, missteps of the Biden administration here over the, just the first couple of months. But I want to start first with getting Republicans back in power. You've been working on taking back 2022. You've been working with former President Trump as well. You're also the chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Uh, I know we're more than a year away at this point, but how are things looking as far as 2022 is concerned? Well, you know who's helping us is Joe Biden. I mean, I mean, his agenda is not popular. I mean, Americans want a secure border. They want their, you know, they want their schools open, uh, not closed. They don't want men playing women's sports. They, they don't want to kill the Keystone Pipeline. They don't want to kill, get rid of fossil fuel. They don't want to bankrupt this country with this ridiculous spending that the Biden administration is doing. The past bill uh, is going to take us to $30 trillion in debt. The next bill will take us. But 32, 33, 34 trillion dollars worth of debt. We're already seeing significant inflation. Uh, we got the CPI numbers today, which showing that inflation is up. Uh, gas prices are up what 23 percent in a year. Right. Food prices are up 3.6 percent. This is not starting out well for Joe Biden. He's the one's going to get elect, get selected. There's 34 seats up, 20 Republicans, 14 Democrats. Mm -hmm. I think we have at least four pickup opportunities. We're going to clearly pick up uh, the seat in Georgia against Warnick. He does not represent Georgia. We're going to beat Kelly in Arizona. We're going to beat Hassam up in New Hampshire. And we're going to beat Cortez Masto out in, in Nevada. And I think there's going to be other states because this Biden agenda is so unpopular. Yeah, absolutely. What, what about Congress? Have you guys been working on, or I'm sorry, the House? You've been working on the House at all as well? Is the, the numbers look a little better there as far as taking that back? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're 50-50 in the Senate, so we just have to get one to get a majority. Right. In the House, I think they have to get three. Uh, I was just with Tom Emmer. Uh, with uh, who runs the National Republican Congressional Committee and with Ronna McDaniel uh, at the RN Republican National Committee event this weekend down uh, in Palm Beach. And we did an event, uh, we were at a, on a panel together and we just talked about how we're working together. But the really what's helping us is the Biden administration. Their agenda is so unpopular. It's going to get, it's, we're going to have, I think we're going to have a great uh, 22. And we got to fight in the meantime to stop all this bad spending, all these. Uh, these bills that don't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, but I, th I think we're going to have a great 22 in the House and in the Senate, and then it's going to put us in position to win the presidency in 24. Yeah, let's hope so. And let's try to get that infrastructure bill down under a trillion dollars would be nice. Uh, one, one of the many reasons Republicans need to get back in power, and there are quite a few, is the Iran nuclear deal. The Biden administration uh, desperately trying to get back in this thing, which just defies all logic. Now Iran is dramatically ramping up Uranium enrichment, that's the big news this week. Here's what Jen Psaki had to say about Israel's alleged attack on Iran. On a sort of diplomatic front, was the U.S. giving any heads up about the attack from potentially Israel on the power facility for Natanz? I have nothing further to um, read out about our understanding of the origin or the intention of the uh, attack. Was the U.S. In all, at all in any way involved in the attack on the power facility in Natanz? As I said yesterday, we were not. So it, it almost seems to me like we weren't even aware this was going to happen. Uh, and we understand, of course, Biden and Netanyahu don't get along nearly as well as Trump did with Israel's leader. What do you make of all this? Well, look, Iran's not a friend. Uh, they, they, the, the deal that, that Obama got into was a disaster for the United States and our close ally, Israel. It didn't stop the advancement of nuclear weapons by uh, Iran. Uh, it, we gave them unbelievable amounts of money so they could go uh, commit more terror around the world. So my hope is that this doesn't happen. We've got to stand with our ally, Israel. Israel, I mean, President Trump made a lot of effort uh, to bring peace to the Middle East. Uh, with the Abraham Accords, let's, let's focus on how we continue to build relationships for and with Israel. Uh, and let's make it, why would we be doing business with somebody that, like Iran, that, that you, know, right. you know, yells death to America and death to Israel? It's, it is. It, it defies all logic again. And, and they're so desperate to get back into another bad deal. It's just amazing. Another big concern with this administration, uh, China and other dictators like Xi Jinping getting bolder uh, in Donald Trump's absence. Taiwan reporting a record 25 Chinese warplanes entering its airspace. You tweeted today, 
about China going after a freedom activist named Joshua Wong. You wrote, Communist China's attacks on democracy in Hong Kong are disgusting. Not one minute of this detention is warranted. Uh, do you think that times are easier for Xi Jinping and other dictators of the world with Donald Trump gone? Oh, absolutely. Joe Biden has appeased every dictator his entire career. There is no dictator in the world that he has ever stood up to. He's never stood up to Iran. He's never stood up to the Castro regime. He never stood up to Maduro in Venezuela. He's never stood up to Xi. Let's remember what she's doing right now. He has a million people in prison in communist China just for their religion. He's harvesting organs uh, involuntarily. He's taken away, just took away the basic rights of Hong Kong citizens, and he's threatening Taiwan. And, and you know, if you look at the Biden administration, oh, they want to be friends with everybody. No. I mean, this is, I mean, how can you be a friend with somebody that's building a military that wants to dominate the world? That never, anything that comes out of Xi's mouth is a complete lie. Yeah. It is something else to, to see how they, they're handling uh, this man and, and how so many on the left just look the other way at some of the atrocities that China commits uh, is just amazing, even in the business community in this country. Uh, finally, sir, on a much lighter note, uh, you presented President Trump with the NRSC's inaugural champion for Freedom Award. Here's a photo here for, among other things, enforcing the southern border, which is another one of Biden's big disasters. The award, though, has actually been mocked by Democrats, including, of all people, <laughs> Eric Swalwell, who tweeted out, so Rick Scott gave a toddler a toy, big deal. But let's focus on what Scott and his Senate GOP cronies are trying to steal from us now, our votes, our safety, our future. Of course, Swalwell doesn't have much reputation anymore. He's still got something to say, though. They, they've been poking fun at the size of the award. We can pull this up again. Uh, we saw that you responded to this. What is your response to this whole thing? It's kind of funny. Well, you know, you know what we're going to do is we're going to recognize leaders, conservative leaders all over the United States President Trump's the first one for things that they do are good for Americans. Think about what President Trump got done. Three great justices on the Supreme Court. He cut taxes for the middle class. Uh, he cut regulation to help us create jobs. We had the best economy before COVID uh, that we've ever had probably in this country, at least in my lifetime. Yeah. He stood up to Xi in, China, in communist China, stood up to the cash regime, stood up in Venezuela, stood up uh, to the Ayatollah in Iran. I mean, this is it's pretty impressive, the record uh, that President Trump has for freedom for American citizens. And so I'm, I'm proud of giving it to him, and I look forward to giving it to other conservative leaders that have a track record of helping other people. Yeah, I get it. I thought it was a nice bowl. It looked pretty nice. The picture looks good. Florida Senator Rick Scott, sir, thank you so much for the time. Good to see you. All right. Talk to you later. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.